Hello everyone, uh, welcome to a new tutorial about composing visual music. Uh, in this video I'm going to show uh, how to visualize uh, an acoustic sound in a 3D uh, context. So let's uh, first uh, see what that looks like. So this is a cello sound, let me turn the sound on. So there was a cello ordinario, a G4, and this is going to be a double bass um, su ponticello tremolo. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do today. Um, you can see how the sound is divided into partials, into different uh, frequencies, the components that make the sound uh, what it is. And uh, to um, do an analysis that allows us to um, you know, do that kind of visualization, we have to go through a step uh, outside of Max. Uh, which is uh, using the um, open source software uh, Spear. So that this uh, Spear software can be downloaded. I'll post a link for it in, in the uh, video description. Once uh, that's downloaded, we can uh, open a sound of our choosing. Um, and this sound, uh, a window like this will appear and uh, I leave the parameters as they are. Um, depending on the uh, kind of work we're doing, we can change them, but um, since we're gonna do some, uh, we're gonna select only some of the partials uh, in this analysis, we can leave this as it is, and uh, the analysis will come up as such, and we can see how some partials are uh, consistently uh, following the harmonic series uh, as we expect it to be um, and uh, the, their amplitude this is described uh, on a grayscale um, actually this software actually allows us to play back the sound as a resynthesis of the partials <laughs> which is um, of course, um, not exactly like the sound we uh, we uh, are using. Uh, let's actually uh, listen to that. So that's the sound we're working with, and this is the resynthesis. It's not um, completely accurate, but it's pretty good, um, and it's. Uh, you can do a lot with uh, with this kind of analysis. So uh, what we have to do is we have to save this as uh, an analysis and uh, the export format we want to choose is uh, partials. And uh, so we, if we do that, uh, we click on this and then we click export. It will save the file uh, as with the name of the file as a text file. As you can see, I already have done that. Uh, the cello ordinario G3 fortissimo on the second string uh, dot text that's gonna be just a text file let's see what that looks like this is what the text looks like and um, 
Uh, every line has, so the first one, two, three, four lines are the like a general description of the file, but then we have the actual partials. So uh, to do the analysis, uh, of, to transport, to translate that analysis into Max, I made um, a little external, which I will post uh, on my GitHub uh, page and can be downloaded. So this external uh, uses uh, three arguments. Um, one is uh, the, the scale onto which I want the pitch to be expressed, so MIDI or frequency, and how many partials I want, in this case 30, and then uh, whether I want the name of the file to be prepended by a file path or not. Okay. Um, I can then load the text file into the uh, into the external I created, and that will result into a matrix, uh, which will take some time to load because it's parsing through a lot of values, and um, that's what it looks like. Um, first of all, I get a message on the Max console telling me the name of the sound I've loaded and the uh, number of partials uh, that are contained into the file which uh, I can see uh, it's a lot of partials right right here um, almost 7,000 but we are only gonna pick the first 30 of them and uh, not only that but I'm, I'm gonna have uh, other values uh, on the uh, three remaining planes. Uh, the plane, a uh, plane uh, zero is uh, uh, the frequency expressed in MIDI. Um, this, the second plane is the amplitude of that particular point, uh, and the uh, third one is the timestamp, and the fourth is actually the fundamental frequency of that sound, so it's consistent throughout each column and each row it's always the same that can come in handy if I have to do some transposition some uh, uh, yeah transposing the sound onto different frequencies it's nice to know what the fundamental is um, so to do a visualization of this uh, I can do uh, some mapping I've seen in my uh, in my visualization how the sounds are actually going around in a circle. I mean, that's just a choice uh, to demonstrate uh, how they can move. Of course, the mo movement can happen in many different ways. I can take the normalized, um, the normalized x uh, co uh, coordinate and uh, multiply it by um, two pi. As that gives me uh, 360 degrees in radians. And then the cosine of that uh, as uh, x coordinate, and the sine of that as uh, z, uh, as a z coordinate, will just draw circles on the x z axis, while the y coordinate will be uh, decided by the frequency of the sound uh, in MIDI. Uh, MIDI is good in this case because it gives me a linear mapping of the frequencies rather than a logarithmic one and uh, linear mapping is what I want otherwise I will have all of the high frequencies crammed into a small space and the low frequency spread out very far from one another which is uh, not what we used to or would be helpful in this case um, so that's uh, as far as uh, mapping is concerned now I have to uh, look at the object that I will be using for for the um, visualization and I'm using uh, GGL path uh, path stores 10 values uh, position XYZ which we just did then the color color uh, four values for color RGB and alpha and then scale once two values and one value for the angle so I'll be using the first three plus the coloring 
plus the scale, I won't be using the angle. So that's a total of nine values that we have to create and feed to the GTL path. So from each point that I, that I have in this matrix, I have to create nine planes. Nine planes, three of which I've already created, and it's the uh, coordinates. And then as far as the um, coloring is concerned, um, many different things can be done. Uh, one thing I, I will say is that um, in this case I'm using of course the amplitude as to decide how uh, uh, the luminosity of the of the um, of the coloring. Uh, I will use the um, frequency as a hue value uh, and uh, I will use the fundamental as a saturation. Um, these are just kind of arbitrary choices but uh, one thing I want to point out is when I do this kind of work I usually use a HSL approach rather than RGB so hue, saturation and luminosity I believe that is um, is for me more intuitive than RGB, red, green, and, and blue. And so the scaling values I remember from my um, uh, gen uh, object, uh, the scaling values are the, the, the amplitude, which is on the fourth plane. So if I just do um, uh, an unpack uh, of um, this matrix and I unpack uh, three values and one I also have to give it an offset of zero for the first and three for the second so I will get the first three values on this outlet and the fourth value on this one and the last one will then be my scaling my uh, amplitude and the, therefore my scaling but since GGL path wants two of those uh, wants uh, the scaling to be expressed as, as a tuple then uh, I can pack that into two and then eventually pack all of these into uh, um, A single uh, cell uh, jump three so the first uh, three uh, the XYZ then four for the colors and two for scales uh, so scale color and coordinate um, then this can go into a matrix I want all of the rows, each row of this matrix to be represented by a different GGL path. And uh, to do that, uh, my best bet, I think, is to create a poly tilde object. The, the Y dimension of the uh, matrix will determine how many voices I have into my uh, poly this poly will just give me the in index of the instance uh, contained in the poly tilde. Uh, what I want to do is uh, subtract one because this poly goes, uh, the first instance is one, and I actually want row zero to be the first one. Um, and I want the uh, matrix to be loaded uh, into, um, into the instance so that I can then extract the uh, row. And to do that, I will uh, use another abstraction that is called uh, get row. This abstraction is um, not that complicated. It just takes a matrix uh, and then extracts one row based on the index uh, using a source dimension start and source, source dimension end and outputs just that one, just that one row. And uh, the matrix has to be loaded into this 
the right out uh, inlet uh, and uh, it will output the row whenever it gets an index sent into the right inlet so that will then um, will be then sent into the uh, path and will create the path accordingly so that's the basic structure of the in, inside of the uh, poly tilde instance uh, except that I have to do a few more steps okay uh, number one is I have to uh, f save the matrix the the row into a matrix because I want this to be rendered based on the uh, render render bank that comes out of the world object and to do that then I want to root pass uh, the bank uh, that can go to uh, the matrix to be rendered but I also want to root pass the G matrix Uh, that will go into the right inlet of the get row abstraction. All right. So the, this will uh, pass the message JIT matrix and then the number uh, of the matrix, uh, which will be um, uh, will result into the matrix to be sent into this uh, inlet right here. The bank will actually go onto in the matrix. Whenever I get a new matrix in, I want the I want the poly object to output the number again because this is the right the left inlet is actually the hot inlet of this abstraction. So so um, okay, we're almost there. Um, this if I do this. Um, this will just draw the entire um, will just draw the entire uh, circle with the entire partial uh, but that can be um, can slow down the rendering quite a bit if I especially if I want to do a 3d uh, rendering uh, um, like a tube uh, rendering of the path so what I want to do is um, I want to just take a section. The section of the matrix uh, will be uh, parsed through by a sub matrix object, and um, the section that I will be using is decided by uh, another value that I will call span. How many uh, cells of this matrix of this row will be rendered is decided by the value that goes from 0 to 1 of the span multiplied by the dimension of the x dimension of the row. always give a floating point uh, value to the this operation cmax because otherwise it will think it's an integer uh, so the span will be multiplied by the um, uh, dimension of the row and uh, will give me um, let's round this up uh, to an integer and then prepend dim and this will be the dimension of the sub matrix and then the offset of the, uh, the offset of the uh, sub matrix will be determined by will be determined by uh, the uh, signal a phaser that will be multiplied again by the um, 
x dimension of the matrix. We already have seen this uh, technique in my last video, where I used a phaser uh, multiplied by the dimension of the matrix. I uh, used the integer values, and so that the snapshot object doesn't output uh, values that are not needed. And if I prepend an offset to this, this, pa this patch is ready to go and I can load it into, if I save it, as a polypath, which I've already done. Polypath, let's give it um, 15 voices. Important to have to uh, give it a target zero uh, argument. And then I can give it as arguments a draw to the context that I'm going to be using. Composing Visual Music 3, uh, and that will do it in terms of uh, sending a matrix in this, uh, what I just created. Um, I have um, added this patcher arguments, which uh, will just iterate two um, arguments at a time, and uh, in this case is draw to and the context, um, just uh, because uh, I cannot give like um, arguments, named arguments within uh, the the, in the poly instance, which is something I hope is going to change in the future. Uh, so this, uh, since I've given a target zero uh, argument, then the matrix will be sent to all of them, and each of the poly uh, instance will have a different index. So I will get a different row out of each one of them. And I will render this uh, matrix, uh, this path, uh, based on the submatrix output, which will have a dimension based on the span that I still need to send into inlet 1. And, um, and the offset will be decided actually by a signal, by a phaser. Uh, so the phaser phaser uh, will be sent to all of the um, instances, of course. Uh, the ramp uh, will be multiplied by dimension, the dimension of the matrix, the x dimension, which will output uh, a snapshot of the uh, integer uh, and will be become the offset. Um, then I have this um, second inlet to decide what uh, I can send different things to uh, the path. And the um, last thing I need to do is um, to actually decide the number of voices I'm going to use um, in, this, in this poly based on the uh, y dimension, so how many rows I have in my in my uh, matrix, which is how many partials I am rendering, I am playing. And then I have another part of the patch, which is just a resynthesis of this. Uh, so the whole patch will be posted um, uh, on uh, the link that will, uh, that will be in the description. Um, let's take a last uh, look in the patch that I will be posting, you will find all of this, which I've just described, uh, plus a small patch for um, the uh, playback of the sound, uh, which you can take a look at. Nothing special in there. Um, but let's see what um, that looks like and sounds like once again. So if I turn on the rendering, So I can see I have a pretty good uh, um, frame rate since the uh, 60 is my target.
uh, if I stretch, if I want more to be rendered, my uh, frame rate suffers quite a bit. It's not as fast. Uh, I can try different styles. Ribbon is a little less expensive. Line is much more, much less expensive. And with line, I can actually expand quite a bit. But tube is what I like the most, I think. And I can see how the sound and the and the visuals are very much in sync in a very fine-tuned way. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoy. Uh, enjoy this video. Uh, see you next time.